Next up, Robin Tucker. Good evening. I was asked to uh, present tonight uh, briefly on local government. Uh, how many of you attended a city council meeting today? Or this week? Well, some might be thinking I'm thinking Cedar Rapids, which did have a special meeting today, in case people knew. Also, uh, Hiawatha, Marion, I think all three jurisdictions now. But in addition to partisan politics, local politics, such as the school board, the Cedar Rapids City Council, the other jurisdictions, Marion, Hiawatha, Robbins, all of the jurisdictions that have meetings. Of course, we could talk about partisan politics and talk about the county supervisors as well. But the city of Cedar Rapids meets formally twice a month. Uh, they meet January to December. Generally, they meet in the evenings during the off time of the, or the uh, on time of the year where schools are on. But during the summer, uh, they meet at noon. They met last Tuesday and uh, conducted their meeting. And this Tuesday, uh, uh, a week from today, they will have their second meeting of the, of the year, or of the month. Uh, but the, the real element is non-party uh, politics impact us greatly in our taxes, in the regulation, talking about the regulatory uh, issue, um, David Chung earlier tonight talked about how enamored we are with the presidential politics down. Well, a lot of people who have been getting involved in the political process for the first time are like the gentleman from Cedar Falls who in the last couple of years got very upset as a local business person because they were going to start enforcing a little uh, little known rule in the Cedar Falls uh, ordinance that said every property owner who has a triplex or a multifamily commercial industrial properties needs to have a little lockbox on their um, building. Now, property rights are dear to a lot of people, and a lot of people were taken back. Why would we want to put the keys to our business on uh, the outside of our building? Uh, how many of you followed that issue in Cedar Falls at all? The city of Cedar Rapids, I'm involved in real estate as a real estate broker in Cedar Rapids, and we are required to have city inspections on rental property every five years. <coughs> the city of Cedar Rapids is looking to um, put new legislation in relating to housing policies. Some of the rules that are in that housing po policy are actually not national rules, they're not national standards. <laughs> they're not based on our constitution or state constitution. Down. They're actually based on either UN work or international standards, ISO standards. For example, the city of Cedar Rapids is actually ranked by an ISO standard. For the first time in my life, I had a city inspector commenting about, we've got to make sure we pass enough of this international garbage. I call it garbage. Because our constitution is really what should set our standards, and then we would hope that community standards would be formulated by people. But in actuality, what appears to be moving on is some people would call it Agenda 21. How many in this room know what Agenda 21 is? If you don't, Google it. Basically, it's a UN resolution, and where a lot of people look to Washington down or look to uh, you know, Rush Limbaugh or, or uh, O'Reilly or Hannity or a variety of things that are going on in Washington. But actually, if you take a look at what goes on in the meetings of the cities, meetings of the counties, 
there's a lot of stuff that actually is coming from down, down up. Meaning it's local political people that are making decisions that could have great impact on your personal property rights. And I was asked to speak a little bit about how to get people to get involved in various things because I don't know, how many of you are a member of a city board or commission or a county board or commission? <coughs> Typically these are volunteer uh, positions but they do various things like county board of review, city board of review. I happen to be on the Civil Rights Commission here in Cedar Rapids. Are anybody involved in it, uh, school committees or anything of that nature? We got one. I know Janet in the past was on the Civil Rights Commission. Yeah, yeah. Good. These, we need to get Republicans or people who live our self-minded views relating to how government, how policy, how uh, we should reflect on the Constitution involved. So related to all the work that Jim talked about and others talked about tonight relating to organizational work for the party and of course getting candidates nominated and getting candidates elected, one of the things that we need to uh, be active in is going to a city council meeting maybe once a year, going to a school board meeting because obviously there was a lot of conversation about closing schools in Cedar Rapids. Well, if you follow the newspaper, and less and less people probably get the newspaper these days, but there's going to be a lot of decisions made uh, in the coming years by city, by school board, that are going to impact our taxes. Property taxes probably impact us as much as anything. And those are typically nonpartisan at the city and school board level. Obviously, if you take a look at your uh, tax bill when you get it in August, uh, you're going to see seven jurisdictions. Now, it is true, Lynn County is one of them, and that is elected partisan election. But the other six, and actually, if you take a look at it, the school board and uh, the city are the majority of our property taxes. Those are nonpartisan positions. Now, part partisan politics are taken out of that, but we do need to be actively involved because trust me, uh, the other political party is very much involved. Other groups are very much involved. Special interest and partisanship does exist. The chamber has their mission. The labor has their mission. And other groups have their missions as well. And though it's, it's a nonpartisan uh, arena, uh, we need to uh, be involved. You have a, tell me you have a question. When I first moved here, I went to a Cedar Rapids uh, City Council meeting. That was the first thing I do to try and find out what's going on in the city. And what I saw really disgusted me, and that was you saw the members of the panel come out, they sat down, they took questions and you had input from the floor, however, there was no discussion amongst them. It was readily evident, everything was pre-decided. They simply listened as if it was a courtesy. Yes, 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 everyone ready to vote? Okay, unanimous, bam. So I wasted my time. I felt like I wasted my gas driving down there. And so if we want to do something, then my question is, is how do I become effective? Because that was cut and dried as it could be. It was just simply for the media a show. I, I might as well have sat home and watched a soap opera that day. I would have gotten more out of it. Um, so I'd like to know... You know, I want the inside scoop on how are you effective? How can you be effective? Because that wasn't effective. Well, I, I, I'll give you my personal experience. I, last year I went to three, I went to school, uh, the city council meetings more than three times, but on three particular issues I was very outspoken on. Uh, we didn't win every issue, but we got some of the issue back. <coughs> really, the way you fight city hall, if there is a concern, is you've got to constantly watch them. There is a consent agenda. There's a consent agenda that they pass a lot of things on the consent agenda. Uh, you can look at the agenda if you have internet access. The Friday after 4 o'clock, 
The meetings are the Tuesday. They meet twice a month. For example, we had a meeting on the 12th. By Friday at 4 o'clock, they post what their agenda is. If I printed it out for everyone today, I believe the full agenda, which has all the supporting documents, was 376 pages long. That is actually small. You want a speaker that will give some uh, good insight on city council and how frustrated they have been, it would be the watchdog Carol Martin. But there are times when I've spoken to Carol and she's said, well, they got over 500 pages this week. Uh, you know, we're talking about a large budget. We're talking a lot of things. In 2000, I believe it's approximately 2000, maybe a little bit before, Lee Clancy was mayor, and it was under the old form of government, the commission form. They made the decision of making that meeting non-conversation, non-dialogue. Uh, they are encouraging all boards and commissions to do the same. For example, the, the uh, City Rights Civil Rights Commission adopted in their, uh, uh, well, basically the chair basically has taken the viewpoint we're going to follow what the um, uh, City Council does. There is always a public uh, input. There's actually two public inputs utilize those. Often when there is a public hearing, it takes three hearings. Utilize those. Kathy, you have a question. We do have a great Republican mayor in North Corbett. And one of the And with the neighborhood associations, we have a member from the administration come to a monthly meeting and they meet with us. And so for neighbors, the best thing to do get a one-on-one -on -one with that council person or the administrator. We have the chief of police comes to ours. And it gives you time to talk to them and they will answer questions at a neighborhood meeting. So I guess really what we need to do is we probably have about 48 neighborhoods in the city. You know, our precinct uh, is CR25. I'm not sure the, the people in CR25 want to be so formal with the neighborhood association. What's really funny is it, it's absolutely right. The neighborhood associations have good political power in the city of Cedar Rapids. How many officially are there? I think there's about 12. For example, I know that one gets about seven people to it, and the city manager is the one assigned to that. Now that is really uh, having an ear to the city manager. Uh, to me, one of the biggest concerns is is you got a lot of various groups out there, and you don't have uh, the city council members actively assigned to those groups or city staff because it as as Kathy said they don't strictly assign elected officials they also have city staff and administrators that are assigned as well I'm a strong believer that if Cedar Rapids is going to move forward and catch up some of the cities that I think that have passed Cedar Rapids over the last 20, 25, 30 years I think there's going to need to be a community dialogue. Uh, the only way that we're going to encourage a community dialogue, in my opinion, is to get like-minded people who are concerned about certain issues to get to the various venues, whether it be the City Council, whether it be the Board of Supervisors, whether it be the City of Marion. You know, uh, the City of Marion, we learned when the city uh, mayor's race and other council races, we learned a little bit about what was going on in Marion relating to some controversy, relating to some of the fee structure, and relating to some of what the uh, discussion was on the changing of roads. I should, uh, go ahead. I'd like to get out of here before 9 o'clock. Fair enough. Because of his interest in this effort, I move that the Loon County Republican Central Committee authorize Robin Tucker to head up the effort he has just outlined. I second that. Okay. Second. Second. I second that. Discussion. You're elected, Mr. Douglas. Hearing none. Yeah. I'm waiting for another. All right.
No further discussion. All in favor? Aye. I want to mention, did anybody catch the interesting story relating to ADA and the lawsuit or the investigation that the federal government is doing on the city of Cedar Rapids related to the bus system? Hmm? No. Thanks, guys. I think Robin just learned a valuable lesson. We go up there and stand in one place too long. That's what you've done to do. All right.